Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Palace of Mad King Ludwig, which is a sequel to the super popular Castles of Mad King Ludwig. And in this game, instead of each player building their own individual personal castle, all players are contributing to one big master castle to please the Mad King. And I'm going to show you how that works today in a two-player run-through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel, so if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then, welcome! to the castle, which at the beginning of the game just has three hallways that were put down randomly. Also, as part of setup, there are four objective tiles out here that players are going to be competing for. And in this game, we're competing to have the most blue swans, the fewest yellow swans, the most downstairs rooms, and the most staircases. So those kind of work well together. And also, as part of setup, there's a whole bunch of moat tiles. Six of them are out here randomly that represent the different rooms we can be building to expand the castle. And also, there are literally 300 swans in the moat. You could call this game the Swans of Mad King Ludwig, quite frankly, because they are our primary monetary resource in the game. We'll be using them quite a bit once we earn some. Because at the beginning of the game, here I am, here Jen is, nobody's got any swans. I am the green player, uh, which means I have feathers that I use to mark my territory. Jen is the blue player, which means she has lovely little musical notes. Last thing we do before we get started is each player draws three additional objective tiles and picks one in secret that will be something they're trying to gain control over. So let's see what I've got. Hmm. Okay, so I could go for... Oh! I could go for having the most yellow swans which is interesting, because if I go for this, there's already a public goal of having the fewest yellow swans. So, that means if I take this, I'm pretty much guaranteed to win it, because Jen will be trying to ensure she doesn't have very many. So, if I have more than her, well, I'll score 10, and she'll score 15. But, you know, that's only a five-point difference, and maybe that means, hey, because I don't have to worry about competing on yellow swans, I can focus that much more on the other stuff. So, I might go for that one. This one is, I'll get 15 points if I own the fewest hallways. And hallways are a very, very handy thing. But hey, if, um, if Jen just builds one and I never build any, boom, there's 15 points for me. And also, have the fewest entertainment rooms. So these fewest, they're not too terribly hard to come across because you just got to make sure you don't make any. Although sometimes you'll desperately want to make an entertainment room because it's just perfect for you. Hmm, let's see here. So, do I go for the swans and just means I just don't have to worry about it all because it's pretty much guaranteed to happen. I'll make 10, Jen will make 15. I don't think I want to cede that to her. So, I'm going to be fighting to have fewer yellow swans than her. Let's see, the ones you don't pick go to the bottom of the stack. Fewest hallways or fewest entertainment rooms. I can see there's an entertainment room on the display already that I could be building. That means if Jen... Yeah, okay. Uh... But I never have to build hallways. Hallways are really nice, though. They really, you know, because they're universal connectors, so they're easier to put anywhere, and they're a great way to get swans. Okay, I will say, but if I just leave this, I'm sure Jen will build that, and then, boom, I'm already in the lead for losing on entertainment rooms if Jen builds that thing. So, do I go for that, or do I go for the hallways? Um, let's go for the entertainment room. So, that is my secret goal. I want to provide less entertainment to the king than all other players. Although now, I've got another tough choice. I have to decide where to put this on my own little board. Now, I put it face down so that nobody knows what it is, and I have to put it in one of these six slots, like this. And what that means is, I am potentially denying my... or not potentially, I'm definitely denying myself a different bonus. Because you can see, if I put it here, then that means I can never activate this plus 10 points at the end of the game. This is 10 bonus points if I activate this bonus. If I put it here, I, at the end of the game, cannot automatically break all ties for all the objectives. That's really handy. If I, put it, if I don't put it here, I have the opportunity at the end of the game to get three additional swans of my choice. And maybe I'll want to get three more blues at the end so I can win the blue swan com competition. If I put it over here, I block this or this space, that means I don't 
get the opportunity to get discounts on swans, which is a really big deal. And finally, if I put it over here, I block off my ability to control the advancement of the moat. Now, I definitely want to be able to do that. Um, controlling the moat is hugely important in this game. I think I will put it over here. And that means I have forever denied myself the ability to um, break ties. Now, I, get, I still I have access to the other abilities, but I don't have them right away. I have to take a tile and slap it in like this. And if I do that, and that's expensive, it'll cost me three swans to do it. But if I do so on a future turn, I've locked in 10 points. Or I've locked in a discount on all future rooms. But I can never now lock in the ability to give myself a tiebreaker at the end of the game. So anyway, so where was that? That was over here. So, meanwhile, Jen is thinking about, what is she? 10 points for the majority of purple swans, 10 point, 15 points for the majority of secret swans. And now that's actually pretty cool, because to get secret swans, you have to build um, downstairs rooms, and there's already a competition for downstairs rooms. So if Jen's going for that, she could also be going for secret swans. And then this one is, have the most bonuses locked in. So if you um, spend a lot, so that's actually really nice too. And Jen loves those bonuses. And this gives her another reason to go for it. I think she'll go for that instead of the secret swans or the most purples. All right. So, although the act of taking this means that's one less bonus Jen can take. So which bonus is she giving herself, is she giving up? I think she won't give up the tie one because she can see if she gets this bonus later on, she'll be able to break ties. This is a 15-pointer. If she puts it in here, she denies herself having 10 points. Mm, so that means this is only a 5-pointer. She's not excited about that. She will cut off the bonus swan. So Jen, at the end of the game, has no way of getting this bonus swan bonus. These three things happen at the end of the game. These three happen throughout the game. They are discounts on getting room tiles or controlling the moat. All right. So we are now 100% up ready to go, and I'll be the first player. And how does it work? Well, on your turn, you are always going to expand the castle. Well, almost always. And what that generally means is you're going to grab one of these room tiles and connect it to one of the existing room tiles and potentially score bonuses and whatnot along the way. So that's what you're trying to do. Now, instead of building a room, we could build a hallway, which extend, you know, which are nice because they're just really flexible, these hallways. Or we could build a staircase, which means, you know, if I build a staircase, I put the white side, which means upstairs, the light side, next to an existing. And now over here on the dark side, we would put, and there is, there's the hole. This is an, a downstairs room. One could put the downstairs room down here because there's stairs that go down. Now, what do I want to do? Now, instead of taking a tile to um, build and expand the castle, which is what you're going to do most of the time, if you've got enough swans, you could spend three swans to get another objective, um, but then you'd have to cover up another bonus slot to be able to go after that objective, or you can spend three swans to grab a room and instead put it in like this, to unlock special power. Now, at the beginning of the game, neither gender or I have any swans. So we're not going to grab an objective or grab a, you know, a, another, you know, unlock special power because we need at least three swans to do that. Also, since I have no swans, I cannot build the baconry, the hole, the bed, uh, the bed chamber, or the freezer because those cost two or one swan. So right now, at the beginning of the game, I'm either going to build the lilac cabinet or the audience room or a hallway or a staircase. It's one of those four things. And now here's an interesting thing. Remember, there are 15 points to, or 10 points to be had for owning the most stairways. So you know what? Because of that, I'm going to build some stairs right off the bat instead of the lilac cabinet or the audience room. And now I've got to put it somewhere and I can put it um, in any of these slots. I'll go on ahead and put it there. Eh, I'll just go ahead and put it right there. Okay. So, and I use one of my feathers to mark that this is my tile. Now, when I put it down, I put it with the light side up to indicate that this staircase is not complete yet. Once somebody, um, you know, either me or Jen, builds a downstairs room, then all the uh, entrances for the stair, the stair will be complete, and I'll flip it over to say that this is a completed room, which means I will unlock the bonus of that room. But right now, it's incomplete. And um, 
Right. So that was that, and that was my first turn. Oh, also, I have to make a note that, hey, oops, I, 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 had, to, I had to mark this as my staircase, and I also use another one of my feathers to mark that, hey, look at this, folks. I have built one staircase. Woohoo! After I build two more staircases, I'll unlock a secret swan, um, and so on. So I mark this, and in future, if I build staircases, I just move this over to the right to keep track of how many staircases I own. Because remember, whoever has the most staircases at the end of the game wins 10 points. So that was my turn. And now it is Jen's turn. And so, I mean, she could do a staircase as well, but what she'd like to do is, if she had a swan, she'd like to get the hole here and add it at the end of my staircase. And she would mark this as her own room. But she has no swan, so she can't get to that yet. So, but she can do the lilac cabinet or the audience room. Let's see. I think she'll go on ahead and build an audience room. All right. So, we place this, um, you know, and, and it, because it didn't cost any swans. Now, Jen can put, she can't put it here because this is an upstairs room. It cannot go at the bottom of a staircase. So, Jen can put it in any of these six spaces. But you'll notice that there are swans on all the doorways. And that indicates that if Jen puts this down in such a way, like say, puts this like this, because she's matched a red swan to a red swan, Jen will get. A red swan! Hooray! Which she can then use to buy these more expensive rooms, as an example. Now, interestingly, this also has a gray, which counts as a wild. So Jen, she could say, put this right here, and the wild goes up to the purple. It's like there's a purple touching purple. So Jen could get a purple swan if she wants. Or she could get a green swan, or a green swan, or whatever it might be. I forgot, what is she trying to do? Oh, right, she um, wants more bonuses. If, you know, if she wanted to have the most purple swans or something like that, she might put it like this to give herself a purple swan. So what is she going to do? Um, well, you know what? Jen's favorite color is purple. So she will go on ahead and put it here. And so she's got to mark this as her room. Um, she has connected two swans. They're purple. So Jen got herself a purple swan, which means she can use it in a future turn to buy stuff. Or if she saves up, uh, she could spend three swans to get a bonus or three swans to or an objective, or three swans to lock in a bonus, which is what she definitely wants to do. And again, she puts this marker here with the light side up to indicate the room is not finished. Once a room has been put here and here, uh, or you know, a, 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 a connecting room here and here, then the room will be finished, she'll flip it over, and she will get a bonus. This is an entertainment room. The bonus is she will get seven points right at that time. So now Jen has a goal of putting rooms here and here so she can finish the room and score seven points. And also, in the meantime, Jen makes note that she has made one entertainment room. What was my goal? And I'm happy about that. This is kind of what I hoped for. I am now winning in be having the fewest entertainment rooms. Jen went and built it exactly as I had planned. Now, I, I can build entertainment rooms too. I just got to make sure I've got fewer than Jen at the end of the game. Because I can't have the tiebreaker bonus anymore. So anyway, so that was Jen's turn. Now, since she took a room, these ones slide over. So they get a little cheaper, and a new one comes out. It is a laundry room, and it is now my turn. Now, if I could, I would want to build the hole. But I don't have any swans, and I still can't afford it. But I would love to put this down here, because that would um, complete my staircase, and then I'd be in the lead on both stairs and downstairs rooms. But I can't afford it. So, what can I do? I could build the baconry, the lilac cabinet, a hallway, or I could build another staircase. Well, there's one restriction. I can't have a staircase go down and then immediately back up. This is not allowed to go whoop, whoop, you know, down and then up. Although it's interesting, the rules do allow you, say if there is a, um, you know, um, if you ever had one over here, you are allowed to put light sides. You could go up and then back down, but you can't go down and then back up. So that's a restriction on stairs. But I'm already in the lead on stairs. I don't need to make more stairs. I guess... Now, here's what's going to happen. I know if I make the baconry or the lilac cabinet, that that means the hole will get cheaper. And on Jen's turn, she will end up building it, which means she will take the lead on downstairs rooms. 
But there's really nothing I can do. Well, there's one thing I can do about it. I could say, hey, I, I want to be the one to build that. So I don't want to build either of these to make this cheap. So I could just build a hallway because they're always free. And you know, it's got a bunch of this one on the top. I could put it over here and that would give me a blue swan. Or I could put it over here and that would give me a red swan. Or I could put it over here and that would give me a red swan. Although th this would be a problem. If I put this right here and mark this as my own, Hey, I'd get a red swan immediately. And if I complete this room, I get to flip it over and get the bonus, which is two green swans. But if I put this here, it's impossible to complete this room because I would never be able to put a room that matches this doorway because it's right up against the wall. So this would be a bad place to put this. Now, Jen, she didn't mind putting her, audi her um, audience room here because there's no doorway on this side. All she's got to do is put a connecting room here and here, and she can complete this. If I want to build a hallway, I don't want to put it there. No, I don't. Um, but still, you know, I, hey, like I said, I could go on ahead and put it over here and give myself a uh, blue swan. And then I'd have some money to buy the hole. Yeah, what the heck? I'll go with that. So I have just built my first. Hallway. I haven't finished it yet, so I haven't flipped this. Um, but I do, since I matched a blue to a blue, I have a blue swan. Hooray! Okay. And it is now Jen's turn again. And since I went over here, none of these slid over. And here's the deal. Jen wants to build that hole. Um, because she wants to be winning on downstairs rooms. But it would cost her. Does Jen want to spend her precious purple swan to get this and build this? Now, there's another downside to it as well. If Jen does, she'll get this. The only place she can build it is at the bottom of my staircase. And by Jen doing that, she will complete my staircase automatically. Jen will be helping me out by helping me finish my staircase. And so she doesn't want to do that. Certainly, she doesn't want to spend one of her precious swans to do it. But if she does it, then she will be in the lead on downstairs rooms, which is worth 15 points as opposed to lead on stairs, which is only worth 10. So is that worth it? Downstairs rooms are a rarer commodity. They're the rarest type of room. Yeah, I think Jen will. She will spend her purple swan. I'm like, no! I just got my blue swan. I was going to do it. But Jen will do that. And with that, she'll have it go off in this direction. She marks this as an incomplete room. And she marks that she has made one downstairs room. All right. So, so far, Jen has made an entertainment room and a downstairs room. And because she completed my staircase, this flips over and I have unlocked this bonus. Now, what this bonus is, at the end of the game, for every downstairs room connected to this staircase, I'll score three points. So effectively, Jen just gave me three points. Yay! And she spent a swan to do it. Um, I would have had to spend my blue swan to do that, so I can't complain too terribly much. But Jen's happy because she's now in the lead for this 15-point most downstairs room. As you can see, this is the symbol for a downstairs room. It's right there. And okay, So that was Jen's turn. Things got cheaper again. And what comes out now? A uh, hi, uh, hibernatorium. The hibernatorium, which is a, a sleeping chamber. OK, my turn again. So what am I going to do? Well, what I would like to do is put a room here, here, and here so I can complete this passage and so I can flip this and unlock two green swans. So what am I going to build? Uh, let's see. What I could do is, you know what? Who doesn't love bacon? I think I'm going to build the baconry. And I might go for a snack later on. Look at all that bacon in there. All right, so I'm going to place this like this. All right. And so I have built my first food room. Got to make a note of that. And, ta -ta 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 -ta. and um, so I marked this as incomplete. And this room is still incomplete as well. Um, and that was it. And uh, now, if once I put a tile here, and notice, this is a gray swan. So no matter what, I will be able to um, uh, you know, uh, get this complete and get a swan. A gray swan means a swan of my choosing. And the, I'll probably end up choosing a blue swan, because whoever has the most blue swans at the end of the game gets 10 points. Right, OK. And I certainly won't pick a yellow swan. Nobody wants those nasty yellow swans because you want to have the fewest to score 15. So anyway, so that's what I built. Um, and now I need to put one over here and over here to complete this room. But I need to put one over here to complete this room. All right, so that was my turn. And everything gets cheaper again. And another thing comes out. It is a sauna. OK, Jen's turn. Now, let's see here. Jen would like to get a room here and here to complete her audience room. 
But she'd like them to be rooms that have red or red so that, red or gray, you know, because gray is wild, so that she can get more swans. Because she spent her one swan to do the downstairs room. Now, what can she build? She can build the lilac cabinet or the state bedchamber. Neither of those, neither of those, unfortunately, have red. So that's kind of a bummer. Hmm. But what Jen could do, uh, she could, oh, and unfortunately, the hallway that's on top doesn't have red. So there are, let's see, uh, coming in the future, this hibernation room and the sauna both provide red swans. So Jen wants to wait for these to get cheap enough so that she can put them here and get more red swan bonuses. So she's going to leave that alone for a while and she's going to build someplace else. She can't expand here because you can only... Um, oh, she could. She could expand here by building a staircase back up. And the interesting thing is, Jen would then complete this downstairs room and um, she would be tying me for most staircases and she would get herself the reward for completing a downstairs room is a secret swan. So Jen could do that, but I don't think she's excited about that right now. She'd like to build up some more downstairs. Um, although actually if she does this, um, you know, then she has locked in her lead for downstairs until more downstairs come out. And once they come out, somebody's got to build more stairs and all kinds of stuff. So Jen could just do this right now, but she does want to build over here so that she can push these down into the cheap zone, or she wants to get some more swans because she wants to finish this room. Now, here's another thing she could do. This is kind of funky. Uh, let's see. Remember, Jen wants to have the most bonus tiles at the end of the game. This is her secret goal. So what I think Jen's going to do, she's going to build a bedchamber. All right. It's got greens. So if she puts it here, she'll get a green swan. If she puts it here, she'll get a green swan. But she doesn't want to do that because she will ruin her chances at... Um, I mean, it will be impossible for her to complete. It'd be legal to put this here, but she'll never be able to complete the audience room. But what she could do is she could go like this. And, um, and then when she marks this, hey, she'll get a green swan. She won't be able to get a red swan, unfortunately, because these don't match. But say la vie. Because here's the thing. At any time, you know, on a future turn, I might grab this and put this here like this, specifically so that I can get a green swan and I can cut off Jen's room and make it impossible for her to ever complete it. That would be a totally legit move um, and a nasty move for me to ruin Jen's chances of ever finishing this room so, Jen, she's a bit exposed there. She doesn't want that to happen. So, to protect herself, she will go on ahead and take this bedchamber. She'll put it here like this. She marks this. This is the first bedroom she has made. Okay, where are they? Uh, oh, it's the Z symbol. So, she's made a bedroom. And she gets a green swan for her benefit. Um, right. And this room is co completed. It's done, folks. So, she immediately flips this over, and takes the bonus. Now, the bonus for sleeping rooms is another bonus tile. and um, Or uh, not a bo another bonus tile, but an objective tile. Or I'm sorry, no. Not an objective tile, a bonus tile. So Jen gets to lock in a bonus of her choosing. Because remember, she wants to have the most of these bonuses. So to do this, now normally to do this, on your turn, you would spend three swans and then grab a tile, but Jen's getting to do it right now for free for having completed this bedchamber. So she can take any of these tiles, flip it over, and slip it into a slot and give herself a bonus. Now here's the deal though. Whichever tile she takes, she's still got to pay for it. So if she were to take the laundry room or the freezer or something like that, it would cost her. So she'll just go on ahead and take the lilac cabinet because it's free. And she'll slap it in right here. And from now on, for the rest of the game, Jen gets a one swan discount on buying rooms, which is awesome. And Jen is now in the lead for having the most unlocked bonuses at the end of the game. Okay, so that was a big move for Jen. She says, hooray! All right. And um, now, oh, and then, so since multiple things went, uh, things are getting cheaper. And hey, we've got a kitchen and a laboratory. And now it is my turn. I totally forgot. What is my goal? You know what? I'm not supposed to do this. I'm going to leave these face up because I keep forgetting what our goals are. Obviously, you would never do this in real play. You would keep it face down. But I'm just trying to remember. Right. I got to worry. <gasps> oh, another downstairs room came out. And here's the thing. I would have to spend two swans to get it. Jen, because she's now got this discount, only has to spend one swan. So here's the deal. What am I going to do this turn? 
I know Jen's probably going to take this next turn, put this over here somehow, which means she'll complete this, she'll get a secret swan, and she'll be even further in the lead for downstairs rooms. So what should I do? Maybe this turn? I should go on ahead and build a staircase and climb back up. Now, I'll be helping Jen because I'll complete her room and get a secret swan, but hey, then I'll have two staircases. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that before Jen gets to make... Although, here's the thing. I do have... If this does get built down here, it's helping Jen because then she'll control more downstairs rooms, but it's helping me because every room in this basement gives me three points because I've got the stairs that go down. So I don't want Jen to build this, but I do. I, I mean, I want to build this myself, but I know I can't get to it because I'd have to spend two swans. I could spend this turn getting a second swan, um, but then on Jen's turn, she's already got a swan. She's got the discount, so I know Jen's got that. So I got to decide right now, am I going to make a staircase back up so I take the lead on staircases and I make this less attractive for Jen? Or am I going to let it go and, hey, keep working on my baconry? Or keep working on filling up my hallway and let Jen get this. Hey, at least she'll have to spend a swan to get it, right? Um, because, hey, at least I'll get three points. So, do I block her and help myself or what? Ooh. Well, you know what I just noticed? Ooh, that's pretty. This is pretty nice. I think I'm going to let it go. I could build a staircase and stop Jen's progress, but I'll just be happy to get three points off of her progress. Instead, I'm going to take this laundry room, which you'll notice, these utility rooms, they're dead ends. And I'm going to put it right here. Oh, oh man. Oh, what I was going to do, I was going to put it right here because that would complete my bakery, which gives me another objective tile. But I just noticed, if I spend my precious blue swan which is a bummer because I want to have the most of them. But if I spend it, I can get this hibernatorium and I could put it here like this. And look at that, folks. Look how perfect. I will claim this. This is my first sleeping room. And I put it in. Hey, I get a red swan and a red swan. Yeah, baby. I got two red swans. Okay. And I have completed this room and this room. Nice! Okay, so I get a bonus just like Jen did. I get to take one of these... <gasps> I could use these two red swans to pay them to take this laboratory and turn it into my bonus tile so that Jen can't get it. And it'll give me 10 points, or it'll give me three swans at the end, or it'll give me a discount. Uh, but what else do I get? In addition to that, let's. I can do these in either order. Um, or actually, can, yeah. So I'm going to do this first. This bonus is draw three objective tiles and pick one. Alrighty. This is not a good one because I already have... I'm trying to have the fewest entertainment, so I don't want to have the most entertainment. Let's put that at the bottom of the stack. I have no use for that. This one, have the fewest secret swans. 20 points. Oh. And, okay, here's the deal. I know if Jen continues to build underground or downstairs because she's going for this, and when she does that, she'll be picking up secret swans. And then I can say, I don't care, honey. Pick up all the secret swans you want because I want the fewest secret swans at the end of the game. Or I could have 15 points for the most cooking rooms. I already have one food room. I like the secret swan one, though. So let's go on ahead and do that. So now here, the good, the good thing is I've got this bonus that I'm pretty much guaranteed to get as long as I let Jen get secret swans, which she's already on the track for. The bad news is I got to cover up another one of my bonuses that I, I, you know, I'll never be able to get those 10 points or those three swans at the end of the game or the discounts. Um, I guess I will give up on the three swans at the end of the game. So, um, and instead, I'm going to go for 20 points. So, if I pull these off, that's 35 points right there. And I'm feeling pretty good. Jen doesn't know. Remember, these are face down. Jen doesn't know what they are. But I'm feeling pretty good about pulling both of those off. And I got a nice little double bonus there. Right, no. That was my first bonus. Now my second bonus is I get to take something and unlock something. Now... And no, I was going to take this lab. I was going to spend the two swans I just got to take this to keep Jen from getting it. But hey, now I want Jen to feel comfortable and confident that she's winning on the secret swan. So I'm not going to take that away. I'll just get rid of... Oh, I'll just get rid of the freezer. Okay. And the same way as Jen's got a discount, I'm going to give myself a discount. So I um, only... I, these are free and these only cost me one swan as well. So that's what I did. And nice, cool move. Things slide over. 
New stuff comes out. It's a, a mold room. That's where you roll your mold and a vault. Wow, a lot of underground. Okay. And it is now Jen's turn. Okay. And what does she want to do? Now, Jen wants to get this filled in so she can complete her room and score her seven points. Uh, that's kind of important. Let's see here. Mm. Well, you, I mean, you, you score them at the end of the game, obviously. So what does she want to build? Oh, the sauna is now in place. So she could take that, finish this off. Looks like we're going to need a little bit more room. Slide that over here. And she'll get two bonuses. The seven points for audience room. And the, um, this utility room says at the end of the game, Jen gets three additional points for every red swan she's got. That's pretty nice. But Jen... Now, here's the thing. Jen doesn't know that I secretly want her to have the most swans. And Jen's thinking, she'd like to get that and put it there, but since both of us can get this lab for free, because we both get the discount now, Jen's thinking she better grab that while the grabbing is good, because otherwise I'll grab it, because, remember, there's 15 points to be had for the most downstairs rooms. So as much as Jen wants this to finish this, she's going to grab this instead, so she can stay in the lead. And what will she do? She'll go on ahead and put this, what the heck, like this. Or she could put it, say, like, like that. There we go. All right. So Jen has just built her first... No, Jen has built her second downstairs room. And now when she builds her third downstairs room, she will give herself a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A gray. A... a uh, can't think of the word. Um, a, a, a swan of her choosing. You get secret swans down here. These grays mean a swan of her choosing. So... Um, so Jen's done that, and she has completed this room, which means she has just given herself the first secret swan of the game. Now, these, well, I don't know what it is. Jen knows it's actually a purple swan. Okay. Now, Jen could use this in the future, or she could hold on to it for scoring at the end of the game. Um, because in addition to all of these bonuses you get, and our secret bonuses we're trying to go for, there are bonuses for set collections of swans. For each set of unique swans, there's five colors. If you have a full set of all five colors, that's 10 points. Um, four colors, seven. A set of two is uh, two. A set of three is four. A, a one is... so. Jen's got a purple, which she could reveal at the end of the game, and maybe that'll get her 10 points for having a bunch of extra swans. Plus, she's a... Well, actually, Jen needs to get another bonus now because I she is no longer winning on the bonuses. Um, so she'll worry about that later. Um, and then also, there's points to be had for rooms like this. She'll get seven points at the end of the game. I'm going to get three points. This is a six-point tile to me right now because there's already two rooms in this basement. So anyway, so Jen put that there. She finished this, got herself a secret swan, has built her second. Um, I see. And actually, have I kept track of everything? Jen's built one, two, three, four rooms. Yep, yep. And that was it. Okay. Things slide down. A new one comes out. We have the Bircha room, which is another entertainment room, which I don't want to build because remember, I want Jen to be in the lead on entertainment rooms so that I can have the 15 point bonus. Right. So, what am I going to take? Now, here's the deal. I want Jen to have more secret swans than me, but I still do want to be competitive for the downstairs. So I'm thinking, maybe I should go on ahead and grab this mold room. Plus, hey, it adds three more points to my staircase. It'll give Jen a secret swan, but it'll give me a downstairs room as well. Because there's another thing. If I have built at least one of all of the types of rooms, I'll get 10 points at the end of the game. If I built two of all types of rooms, I'll get 20 points. So I want to build at least one downstairs room eventually. And it's sitting right here. Um, but remember, I also want to finish my hallway. So this sauna would work pretty well for that, and it'll give me another red. Yeah. Um, and it'll give me three points for every red. So do I do that, or do I compete with Jen for downstairs? Or do I just give up on downstairs right now? Because hey, if Jen spends it, if Jen does it, she's still giving me points, because this is all off of my staircase. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take this sauna for free, even though I've got the discount. But no, I, I want to get this. This is pretty nice. Okay, so I have built my, oops, my first utility room. So now all I got to do is build a, um, a downstairs room, a living room, and an entertainment room, and I've scored 10 points. Although remember, I still want to have fewer entertainment rooms than Jen. So anyway, so I built that. That's my first utility room. And hey, 
completed instantly, and this is a bonus at the end of the game, I get three points for every red swan. And speaking of, I just got another red swan. That's nine points of swan sitting right there, folks, if I never use them to buy anything. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Jen's turn. A storage room comes out. All right. So Jen's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it! Yes, please! She'll go on ahead and take another downstairs room. And where will she put it? Okay, she'll just go like this, I guess, so that it can continue to grow off in this direction. Um, this is Jen's third downstairs room, which means, boom, she just got a uh, swan of her choice. She'll take a blue one because we want to have majority of blue at the end of the game. Um, plus, now she's got three unique ones, so that's a set. That's four points right there. Right, so she built that. Um, and right, so uh, since the two grays matched, she got to choose. And she also completed this room, which gives her a second so it's on, which is a secret yellow. No! Nobody wants yellows. Um, so that's not necessarily good when she reveals it at the end of the game. But worry about that later. So anyway, so Jen built that. Um, and. Right, so she came over here. Oh, so she came up here, and she also gets another one of her choosing. She'll take another blue. So she's really buckling down on getting that blue bonus. So she got one for that. She got one for this. And she got a secret swan as well. Very cool. Uh, and then things slide down. And, folks, we have just revealed it's moat time, everybody. Now, because this is the one thing I haven't mentioned. Every time a room gets completed, you, um, the player who completed that room gets to start placing moats on the board. And the game comes with a ton of these moat tiles. The game keeps going until the moat completely surrounds our entire palace that we're building. And that's what triggers the end of the game. And over time, as we build more and more stuff, more and more moats will come out. Once this stack is full, two moats come out every time a room is completed. And then four moats come out every time. Uh, room is completed. And then finally, six moats come out every time a room is completed. So over the course of the game, it starts speeding up as more and more moats build as we keep trying to complete our rooms to score points. But, um, right, so anyway, so Jen just did that. It's my turn. And so here's the deal. If, um, right, and what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Eee, that's interesting. So, because here's the thing. If I can complete a room right now, and I can, and I'm going to, I'm going to take this laundry room. And I'm going to put it, remember I, I wanted to complete, hey, I just completed my hallway with a little dead-end utility room. Boop. This is my second utility room. And hey, I get a purple swan for matching swans. And hey, this is finished. And this is finished. So I get two green swans for finishing my hallway. And every purple swan is worth three points to me now at the end of the game. So I want to collect a lot of red and purple swans. So that's all very cool. I got a lot of bonuses off that. Yeehaw! But more importantly, I just completed two rooms. So that means, folks, it's time to put out a moat because I completed this room, and a moat because I, or uh, this room, and a moat because I'm going to put out two moats. So, um, and since I'm the one who did it, I chose where the moats go. And my first moat I'm going to place, I'm going to put right here. Boom. And I've cut off Jen's room. Jen cannot finish her audience room now because it's impossible to put a room and complete it. Oh! I just completely... And so i got to put another one. I could have it start snaking around this way or I could put the other one over here. What the heck? I'll just go on ahead and put one here. Right. So the moat has started to build because I just finished those two rooms and I cut off Jen. And Jen's like, no! That's seven points she just lost. But... Jen does have a way out of this. Oh, by the way, um, at the end of my turn, everything gets cheaper, of course. And we start emptying this. Remember, when this empties, then it's two moats per room that's completed. But now, Jen, it's not over for Jen. If Jen ever unlocks this benefit, then all, every turn, on her turn, she can take two moats and move them to the other side. So if Jen gets this bonus pretty quick, she could take these moats and move them over here, and then very quickly try to fill that room in. But, you know, Jen, she got so excited going downstairs, she totally forgot about this, and then I cut it off. So Jen definitely wants to get that bonus at some point so she can still finish that. But anyway, that was my turn. It is now her turn. There's no more downstairs. She can't finish that. In fact, wow, 
Every single thing is cut off. And that's actually an important restriction. When you're placing moat tiles, um, you, you have to build on either side and continuing to circle. But you can't do it in such a way that it would be impossible to finish the game. So like if I were putting some more moat tiles down, I could put one here and here because there's still one legitimate way to build. One could always build a staircase here. But um, I wouldn't be able to put moats down in such a way that it would be, you know, it'd be, it would not be allowed to put a moat here because then we couldn't build anymore. You always have to have at least one place you can build that traces all the way back out to the drawbridge. So anyway, so it's Jen's turn. She can either start building off of this hallway, which is a dangerous place to build because a moat could come and immediately cut that room off. Unless, say, she builds a vault, which gives her three points for every yellow swan. But nobody wants yellow swans, so nobody wants this. Here's another thing Jen could do. Jen could spend three of her swans to give her, to unlock this, to give herself another bonus, like, say, the moat bonus, so she can change the moat and get back her audience room. That might make sense. Because um, she doesn't want this secret swan, because she doesn't want yellows. So that's what Jen's going to do. She's going to spend that and a green, because greens aren't particularly valuable, and one of her precious blues to um, basically activate the um, give yourself another bonus. Because remember, Jen gets 15 points for having the most um, special powers. And what will Jen do? She can get any of these for free, because she's got the discount. Is there one she wants to get rid of? Is there one that's good for me? If there was one that was good for me, she might want to get rid of that. Um... But there's not. Actually, there's none that have green. But she'll get rid of this kitchen because she knows on my turn I could put this here and get a green. So she'll get rid of this and she'll use it to get the moat power. She's got the moat power now. Once per turn she can move the moat. She's going to move the moat over here. And so now, on her next turn, she can build there. And in the meantime, slip, slip, sliding, a new thing comes out. Um, and now Jen is much more confident about getting her 15 points because she's in the lead on special powers. And now it's my turn. And now here's an interesting little trick. You know what? I got a bunch of swans here. These greens aren't particularly valuable to me. I'm going to spend one and get the most... Remember, because I have a discount, to get the most expensive. I'm going to get the Amon Nook. All right. It's a red and a red. And where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it right here and expand... Jen just opened this up. I want to get in on this. I know if I don't build this, Jen's going to build it on her turn. So I might as well spend the swan to build it because here's the deal. All right, this is, is this my first sleeping room? No, it's my second sleeping room and it needs another one over here. But hey, there's a swan bonus. So far, um, every swan bonus that's happened is because, hey, I've expanded my own thing. But in this case, I've expanded Jen's room. So in this case, both of us get a red swan. So I knew Jen was going to do that. And give herself a red swan. And remember, I get three points for every red swan. So it made sense for me to put this here, even though it means Jen got a red swan, because I knew Jen was going to do it anyway. But no, so I did that. I got a red swan. Jen got a red swan. This is my second sleeping room. And Jen just finished her music room, which is worth seven points to her at the end of the game. And she says, thank you very much. She didn't even have to spend a swan to do that, although she totally would have to have completed this room because she had to, get, she had to before it got blocked off again. And now we can continue building out of there. And meanwhile, a new tile comes out. It's a pink cabinet. Um, right, so with more reds. I want to keep expanding and get more reds because I love red swans. But it's not my turn, it's Jen's turn. Jen can expand off of there. She can build a staircase to come back up, or she can expand off of here, although she doesn't particularly want to. Although she could. She could make a dead end right here with a storage room. That would be her first utility room. And she gets three points for every downstairs room she's got. Ooh, that's nice. And she'll give herself a green swan, but she will have cut off more um, expansion. So then we can only expand here and here. Still legal to do it, though. And then that's nine po six points for Jen, because she's got two downstairs rooms right now, and a green swan. So that's an interesting thing, and it would be free for her. Or hey, maybe she wants to get some more red swans? Who knows? But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what the palace of Mad King Ludwig is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five... Four, three, two, one.